All right, we just saw Wendy Bruce get about a 9-5 for her routine. This, this will score higher? This should score higher. She has a little bit more difficulty in the routine. And remember, Wendy broke form a couple times in that routine. Juliet's form can be a little bit tighter, but it was pretty good routine for her. That's her full pirouette over the bar. Now see, she should actually try and finish that a little bit closer to the handstand, but she goes right into a reverse hect. That's her release move, otherwise known as a Tkachev. This is her final series. Leading up to the dismount, she does a giant, another full pirouette. See how she kind of straddles a little early into that. Tuck double flyaway. The value there is in the combination. She did two difficult moves back to back. That's how you get bonus points. And that's what the judges are watching for in 1989. Now let's swing over to the vaulting competition. This is Christine Henrich. She may be a familiar face to some of our ESPN viewers because you saw her at the DTB Cup over in Germany a couple of years ago. She's been training very, very hard since then, has lost quite a bit of weight and added a lot of difficulty. She's doing a roundoff layout full, a terrific vault. One of the more difficult vaults performed. It scored from a 10.0. And Christy has really come on strong. At USA Championships, she did a super job, but she was coming off a tough injury. She had broken a vertebra in her back was out for quite a while. It's a scary injury too, but she came back and she looks better now than she did at USA Championship. Trimmed down and in lots better shape. Look at the nice form in the air. She's a little bit off center there. That's gonna cost probably a tenth of a point. Juliet we'll check her form on pre-flight. Very good, good lift, good position. It can always be higher and a little farther from the horse and that's probably what she'll try and do on this next ball. Christy Henrich, 17 years old, 4 feet 11 inches. She's performing the same vault again. Christy's coached by Al Fong at the Great American Gymnastics Express. Score for Christy Henrich. In talking to Christy, she is really Nine, striving for six, perfection. Six, she six, said two. in the interviews she wanted to try and score tens because then nobody could beat her. <laughs> She got pretty close, 9.662. Now she has a chance to try to do it better. And a nice ball. <laughs> Little quick on the step to salute the judges. And again, she was slightly off center. And every time I've ever seen her do this ball, both at USA Championships and here, she's always just a tiny bit off to the side. How do you correct that? Well, look, it, she's a little off center actually going onto the horse, and it's just intensified because of the twist. So to correct it, she's got to get the board in the center. It's, it's a tough thing to correct because everything is so minute. The details here to, to make that change is hard. Fortunately, since the judges are sitting on the side, they can't see that too well. Christy Henrich received a 9.65 for that second fall. So let's recap the scoring. We saw Juliet Bangerter on the uneven parallel bars. She gave us the best score of the evening so far, a 9.612. Christy Henrich on the ball will use the 9.662 that she received on the first ball in her score. When we come back, we'll have the uneven parallel bars just ahead. Champion Kathy Johnson, and we're back on the uneven parallel bars where Sandy Woolsey is about to compete. She's 17 years old, was born in Denver, but currently resides in Tempe, Arizona. This should be an event for her to really secure her position. Nice giant. Reverse hecht. Good height on that. Straddle back to a handstand. She's moving quite well. She scored a 9.625 in the compulsories on this event. Did the best routine done yesterday. Giant full, little off center on that, goes right into top of the flyer. Again, you're looking at bonus points when they combine the two difficult skills together. And of course, then she has an extra D in that routine, so she will get her bonus. Extra D meaning an, an extra, extra difficult exceptionally move. difficult move. The gymnastics moves are rated A, B, C, and D. And of course, at this level, they're looking at a lot of Ds. Exactly, this is competition three rules, so to get the extra D, you have to have three. That was the giant fall, and that was really one of the only breaks in the routine. She was a little off center on that pirouette. Lost a little toe form there, but a good combination.
Sandy Woolsey is 17 years of age, just five feet tall, and the uneven parallel bars are her favorite event. Now we're looking at Shelly Stack, 16 years of age, calls Birmingham, Alabama home, but resides in Huntington Beach to train for gymnastics. And she's been on a steady comeback trail since midway through the championship. She had actually dropped to 14th place uh, due to a weak compulsory beam routine. She moved up to seventh by the end of the championship. She's now up into fourth place in the all-around, and this is a great event for her to start on. She's a national champion on this event. Hop to mixed grip, front giant, to a back giant with a full pirouette, right into a reverse heck. Good combination. Fulfilling all her requirements, going to the low bar. Giant swing, giant swing with a full turn, right into a tuck double flyaway. Like I said, we're going to be seeing a lot of that combination. It's an easy way to get the bonus point. We've seen it every dismount. <laughs> It's the compulsory optional dismount. <laughs> no, I've even said if, if this team is going to be competitive worldwide, they're really going to have to increase the difficulty on the dismount. They're going to need more originality. Another look at Shelly Stack. This is showing why she became national champion on this event. Good combination here. Front giant to a back giant with a full turn on top of the bar and she goes right into a Takacha for a reverse hect. And the dismount, she added this since championships, a full pirouette again at the end of the routine right into a tuck double flyaway. Good clean form, and she should score high. Well, the scores have been climbing on the uneven parallel bars. We saw Wendy Bruce get a high score, then we saw that exceeded by Julie Bangeter, and now Sandy Woolsey has got the best score of the night, 9.687. Shelly Stack, even better, 9.737. So the adjusted all-around standings after this rotation show Ki Christy Henrich is now our leader, followed by Wendy Bruce and Sandy Woolsey. Be right back. It's a Bay's English muffin. The Bay's Trials here at Arizona State University. We are about to see the balance beam. We've yet to see this event in this competition. Kathy Johnson, there are some elements that the gymnast must complete. Yes, there are. And the special requirements on balance beam have really made a difference in the choreography of the routines. They now have to do acrobatic series, which is a tumbling series with flight, a gymnastic series, which is two dance elements in a row, a mixed series combining acrobatic and dance together uh, with no stops in between, a full turn on one leg, a big leap or jump, and an element or a connection close down to the beam. Any one of these missing in the routine is a tenth of a point deduction. What's the biggest difference between these rules and the old rules? Well, you didn't have these special requirements before, and what they were trying to do is emphasize that the gymnast needs to do dance elements as well as acrobatic elements, and in fact combine them. They don't want to take away the artistry from gymnastics, and it was kind of going away from that. One artist who's about to mount the balance beam is Wendy Bruce. We saw her on the unevens. Right now, she is still our leader. Here she is on the balance beam. Now, this can really be a nerve-wracking experience. Balance beam in a trials is very, very difficult. You don't want to make oh, any mistakes. It's a front somersault. She's usually very solid on this event. Like I said, competing in a trials, it's not like any other competition. It's do or done. You're really trying to make this team. Two back handsprings, a layout step out. It's one of the more difficult moves done on balance beam. conservative up there. She usually moves much more quickly and much more aggressively. Gainer layout step out. That was her mixed series, combining the dance right into that gainer layout step out. A little balance break there. Dismount, round off, double tuck. Good land. Nice, nice finish to a faltered routine. It's really too bad, but she's up there in the top. It shouldn't really knock her too far down. Certainly, I think what's in jeopardy would be, in essence, the first place finish. She's, I would say, a lock to get on the team. Now, 
here's where the mistake happens. She does a front tuck, little low on the landing. That one foot just completely misses, slides down the beam. It's five tenth of a point of deduction. But she came back to do her most difficult pass. Two back handsprings, right into a layout step out. Little sloppy on the leg form. Now we are ready for Cheryl Dundas. She too is competing on the balance beam. This is our first chance to look at Cheryl Dundas. She is 17 years old. One of the tallest gymnasts in the meet at five feet, four inches tall. Cheryl finished ninth at the USA Championship. She's now moved up to seven. Round off back handspring, up to the beam, one arm back handspring. Back handspring, lay out, step out, good form. Now keep in mind, it's going to be really difficult for the gymnast to move up in the optionals because the optionals are only counting 40%, the compulsories counted 60. Beautiful needle skin, showing balance and flexibility. The reason the scores are weighted 60% in favor of compulsories for each for optionals is because the U.S. traditionally doesn't do well in compulsories. That's right, and historically speaking, a team hardly ever moves from their position after the compulsory. They stay in that same position locked in, so you really want to do well in compulsory, so they wanted to put an emphasis on that in this country. So the United States decided to shake up American gymnastics and say, hey, we've got to focus on our compulsories. That's putting us in a deficit right out of the box. It's Let's improve in that department. Later, lay out, step out. You could see that was off right in, she was off center in the air already. She could not make the correction. It's too bad because she's had such a solid routine up until then. The girls are getting a little bit tense in the competition now. Two back handsprings to a double twist, very low on that landing. She barely pulled it around and in fact had leg form deductions in there as well. It's too bad the routine started off very strong. She's coached by Jim and Cheryl Jarrett. And a disappointing finish after a tremendous start. Here was the opening pass. That handspring layout step, but just solid as a rock. Now let's see if you can see exactly where it goes off. She kicks the leg, she's off center while she's in the air, and it's very difficult to make that correction. We'll take a look at the dismount. She does two back handsprings into a double twisting somersault, very, very low, legs crossed in the air, but she does pull it out. We're going to take you back over to the uneven parallel bars where Kim Kelly is ready to compete. She's 16 years old, and she's a young lady who moved up so dramatically after the compulsory. She was 13 at the Nationals in the hour round competition, and then after yesterday's compulsory, she moved up to sixth place. She's still in sixth place after one rotation. And while we were away, we were really talking about those Jeopardy positions, those final three slots. They can't afford to make a mistake. We just saw Cheryl Douglas fall off the balance beam. The top kids, if they fall, they might drop a place or two, but they're still on the team. These guys are fighting for every tenth of a point. Half turn, kick to handstand. Giant swing. Giant swing with half turn to a Jaeger front. She has a back somersault down. She, I think she hit the floor. Pretty hard. That's going to be a, a fairly major deduction. Giant swing to a tuck double flyaway. She will have that deduction in the middle. And if you'll see in her position, she's not as stretched out as some of the other gymnasts. Really needs to work on good straight line on those handstands. Leg form. Kim Kelly of Parquets. Right now, let's recap the scoring. First, for Wendy Bruce, she struggled on the balance beam. Didn't help her cause to regain first place, 8.987. Then Cheryl Dundas, also on the balance beam, scoring a 9.137. And finally, let's look at Kim Kelly's score on the unevens. She notched a 9.25. We'll be back with more on the uneven parallel bars after this. A full service savings bank. She's doing a tremendous job in this routine. Good difficulty in the routine, good swing, 
giant full pirouette over the top, right into a tuck double back dismount. <laughs>